previously on the What Inspires You Tour. I chose this route because this is where the problem is. Um, you know, Louisiana is now number two as far as growth of CKD and, and ESRD. And CKD is chronic kidney disease. ESRD is end-stage renal disease. That's the point where you need kidney dialysis in order to survive. Well, now that I'm across the country, it feels good. I'm excited about the impact that we had, though. Looking at some of the people that we've met along the way, you know, Mamie in LA and, and the testing that she's done, and uh, the patients all over Texas. Spent a good three weeks in Texas, riding up and down and across the state. Uh, Louisiana was very impactful. And now it's time to get down to the business of getting to DC. Well, I hope that the message that uh, is derived from this film and, and the ride is that an individual inspired can accomplish anything. And we have the ability to inspire others by doing what inspires us. There's been a lot of challenges along the way. It's made me a better person. I've, I've grown. I've aged, I should say, these past three months. Still in Jacksonville, uh, riding along the beach, uh, active recovery day. Uh, getting my legs ready for a big ride tomorrow. Got 72 miles to Claxton, Georgia. Final push to DC. We've got 1,200 plus miles to do in less than 30 days. So, piece of cake. Well, the ride across the USA was uh, critical in promoting the message, and uh, we're not done yet. The ride ends on the steps of the Capitol in Washington, DC, and uh, I will be there in less than 30 days and have successfully ridden over 4,000 miles being a dialysis patient. Got a chance to visit the clinic here and uh, a couple of clinics in Jacksonville. Uh, met with some patients and uh, it's always nice to see when the dialysis staff is so dedicated. Uh, it's interesting that the, the clinical manager uh, said that uh, they were like family. And it's an interesting way to look at it because dialysis, spend, dialysis patients spend, you know, 12 to 16 hours a week with these people. Sometimes they spend more time with the dialysis staff than they do with their family. And so they do develop those relationships. And, um, you know, in talking with them and trying to motivate them and keep them positive, um, they have an ability to influence these patients and to give them their lives back. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for people like that. A lot of dialysis patients become debilitated pretty quickly. They become dependent on their significant other, their family member, their wife, um, their husband. And uh, it's really enlightening to see somebody like that, so energetic, um, so in love. They were married for 42 years and uh, being married recently myself, I asked her what the secret was and you know, it's a matter of learning those famous words, yes dear. Ben and I walked outside and it was pitch black and uh, I remember Ben looked at me and said, it's gonna be bad. I said, ah, it's a thunderstorm. And we hopped in the car and headed towards uh, Thomasville, Georgia, where I needed to go for dialysis. Rain started coming down sideways, uh, the wind picked up, um, it got really black, and uh, I was on my cell phone, and we were about 20 miles outside of Thomasville. And uh, I looked to my left, and I saw this tree flying at us. Ben and I looked, I think, simultaneously. He hit the brakes and swerved, and there was a car in front of us that uh, the tree landed on. I was on the phone to 911. Uh, ben got out of the car and ran to try to help. Um, traffic backed up, and uh, there was a young girl in the car, and her father was in the car. The top of the car was crushed. The girl was crushed. Um, the tree, which I mean, laying down, the tree was taller than I was on its side. And uh, got to the car, there was nothing to do. The 911 operator asked if, you know, I could start performing CPR, but there's 
there's really no way to get in the car. I think about everything that's happened along the way and the ride and um, all the great things that have happened. And unfortunately, I think this, this will stay with me the rest of my life. been very liberating riding my bike across the country. Um, given the fact that I've been connected to a, a machine for most of my life, um, I've always felt that I didn't have independence. I couldn't do the things that I wanted to do that I dreamed about. Here I am standing in Jacksonville, Florida, 3,000 miles later, started May 1st, rode my bike across the country. Um, as I said, I feel very independent, very liberated. next time on the What Inspires You Tour. Today we're in uh, Rockingham, North Carolina, on our way to Fayetteville. Here it's 40, 60, 80 miles and nothing but just continuous hills. But my legs are screaming at me. I knew there'd be days like this. I just didn't think they would happen this close to the end.